God seems to blind the abandoned soul, but in fact he is guiding it very safely. These words of St. John apply especially to the souls wholly abandoned to God. You have been anointed by the Holy One, and have all received the knowledge. For these souls, their hearts tell them what God desires. They have only to listen to the promptings of their hearts to interpret His will in the existing circumstances. God's plans, disguised as they are, reveal themselves to us through our intuition rather than through our reason. They disclose themselves in various ways, by chance or by what seems to be a compulsive thrust which allows no choice of action, but sudden impulse by some supernatural rapture, or very often by something which attracts or repels us. Now, if we judge all this superficially, it certainly seems that it is not very sensible to leave so important an affair to such uncertainty. Judging by ordinary standards, there is no order, and indeed no sense, in this way of going on. Nevertheless, to obey this apparent disorder is to have reached the summit of virtue, and it is one we do not reach without long years of effort. This virtue is pure, unadulterated virtue. It is, quite simply, perfection. When we reach it, we are like a musician who, apart from having played all his life, has a complete knowledge of all the theory and techniques of music. All he plays, without even thinking about it, is perfect. And if he writes music, all his compositions will be found to square with every rule governing the writing of music. And why? because he does not set himself to obey the rules which, when interpreted too literally, fetter genius. He writes without constraint, and his impromptu pieces are very rightly thought to be masterpieces. In the same way, the soul which has, for a very long time, studied and worked to achieve perfection, and used every method to cooperate with grace, gradually falls into the habit of acting always by an instinctive following of God's wishes. Such a soul realizes that it can do nothing better than deal with whatever first crops up without all the careful thought it formerly used to need. It must act at random, following these promptings of grace which cannot lead it astray. And what grace does is nothing short of marvelous to those who observe it with clear eyes and intelligent minds. There are no rules, yet there is perfect organization. No proper arrangements, yet all is well ordered. No serious thinking, yet profound conclusions. No effort, yet everything done well. No foresight, yet swift adaptation to every new happening. The reading of books of spirituality, often by God's direction, take on meanings that their authors never dreamed of. For God uses the words and actions of others to disclose truths which would otherwise have been hidden, and if He wishes to enlighten us in this way, we self-abandoned ones must make full use of it, being well aware that anything inspired by God is far more effective than one would imagine from looking at it from a purely human point of view. It is of the essence of the state of self-abandonment that, although the soul thus abandoned always leads a secret life, it yet receives from God most extraordinary gifts by means of the most ordinary things and by events which seem quite natural and mere casual happenings, through occurrences which appear to be a normal part of human life. For instance, the simplest sermons, 
the most ordinary conversations and the most trivial books can become, through God's will, sources of knowledge and wisdom. This is why self-abandoned souls always carefully gather up the crumbs which the proud tread underfoot. For everything is precious to them, and there is nothing which does not enrich them. They are completely indifferent to everything, yet neglect nothing. For they respect all things and extract from them all that is useful. As God is in all things, the use we make of them is not actually the use of creatures, but the delight of obeying his will expressed through so many diverse channels. Now these channels have no power in themselves to help us to holiness, but as instruments of the divine will, they can transmit this grace and often do so to simple souls by ways and means which seem opposed to the intended end. To God, mud is as transparent as air, and the instrument he uses is always unique for its purpose, for to him all things are alike. If our faith is strong, we shall be confident that we lack nothing, and shall never complain that we have not the means which might be useful for our advancement. For the workman who uses these means ensures that we have all we need. His most holy will gives us everything.